<laughs> Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Northboro, the COVID-19 series. Uh, if you haven't seen this show before, uh, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney, but th this has nothing to do with elder law. Um, um, my good friend Chris uh, Lindquist, who runs the library, and I have been doing this series now for a while. Um, and the goal of the series is uh, to help you, like my friends Frank and Mary, who want to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard, and if they live in Northboro, that means here, uh, to help you and them um, know the people and the and the and the um, organizations and the programs that you need to know in order to live a happy life here. And right now, of course, you're not living an especially happy life because you're stuck at home, right? Because you're doing what the governor has asked. And so the question. We started doing this special series, which is really, we've made it weekly so that people can keep up to date on what's going on and also kind of know about the the resources and the and the people that would really maybe be able to help them during this difficult time. So, Chris, you've continued to, to find these terrific guests sure. um, for, the, for this show, although um, I, it, earlier I had I had started to talk to these folks. And realized that they know my knew my uh, my my older sister and her husband who had been very active in Rotary here in Marlboro, right? right? So that was a lot of fun. But can you just kind of talk talk to our talk to us about who we have today, and then we'll start the show. Okay, great, Arthur. So uh, we are very happy to have on today uh, Pat and Skip Doyle, and Pat and Skip are kind of uh, the leaders of the Rotary Club of Northboro, uh, past presidents. Um, they've been involved in, in the International Rotary. They travel all over the world uh, to help uh, the, you know, support the Rotary, and they're involved in so many Rotary activities. It's almost a full-time job, I, I think. I mean, I don't know where they find the time. And they've got so much energy. They're so community-oriented. Uh, and and they're, you know, there's so much going on behind the scenes with the Rotary as well, even though, you know, obviously we're all dealing with this. But I know they've got the Nutrition 68 program, for example, to help, uh, you know, provide food for those in need. And, and the Rotary, you know, really is a community organization. So I'm just happy to have them on today to, to help uh, them talk about, you know, what's happening with the Rotary. Sounds great. Sounds sounds great. And and I think, once again, Chris, I think we we're even, I was even talking to them a little bit about, you know, the, the of course, the Rotary's response to the polio vaccine worldwide has been so important. And even talking about kind of the, you know the kind of ramp, ramping up the 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 rotary response to COVID nineteen. So it's just very exciting, very yep. exciting. So thank you for being on the show. It's our pleasure. Our pleasure. Uh, Pat and Skip. So you know I've only been a Rotarian I, I think in you know in Northboro for a few years, and and I know you know you guys are not meeting in person, but you're having your Tuesday meetings, and and we're doing I think Zoom meetings, virtual meetings. Um, how's that going? And, and what are some of the things, you know, the activities that the Rotary's uh, working on right now? So, go ahead. Well, we're, we're meeting by Zoom. We've met um, probably four times now. We're attempting to get as many members as we possibly can to get on with us. Um, some of some people don't have the technology, and and we certainly don't have a, a Dana to help everybody get online. But if we had, we we'd have more people in our Zoom meetings. The Zoom meetings have been fun, not only for us to talk about business because business goes on as usual in Rotary, and we have donations and things that we're working on and projects, but also to see how everybody's doing because it's great to check in with people. And these are people Rotary meets every week. In Northboro, we meet um, three Tuesdays, the first three Tuesdays of the month. The fourth Tuesday, um, we meet at Margarita's for a social in the evening. So we see each other every week. It's hard not to see each other every week. And it's hard not to know how everybody's doing. So that's what Zoom has done for us, as well as keep Rotary going. It's allowed us to, um, to see people and actually talk to them. So okay. we've, en we've enjoyed it. That's wonderful. So, so last Friday, uh, we invited everybody to have margaritas at home. <laughs> so we brought so our true uh, margarita meeting. <laughs> we, we held up our margarita glasses and everybody held up whatever beverage they had at the moment. And we got, we socialized for a while, but we still had business because business, as you say, business as usual in Rotary. Certainly, you mentioned uh, Nutrition 68. We are so 
heartened by the response of Northbrook to the Nutrition 68 program. All we've had to do is mention that we're looking at food insecurity of about 30 families spread throughout the, the elementary system and the middle school system here in Northborough. And we're helping them, we were helping them weekly with, on Friday, with a bag of food, um, a backpack that no one knew they had. It slipped into their regular backpack. And, and in that um, was, you know, just a weekend worth of food that a young person might prepare themselves if they even were left alone. Uh, and we know that some of these kids were left alone. So we were doing that throughout the school year. Now school ended. School ended abruptly on a Thursday. We were ready to pack and we couldn't because there was no school on Friday. So we also no longer could go into the schools ourselves to do the packing. And there was no way it was even harder for us to go do the shopping because Skip and I are not supposed to be out in the grocery stores. So it was a little harder to, to even do that. So we kind of appealed to the community and and the community response monetarily because we can't take we, we can't take um, donations of food because there's no place to store it. We can't get into the schools. So the monetary it's just been it's been so wonderful. We had a, a a drive. We put everything together for this Thursday. We had the boxes ready, so we did it on Wednesday, and the boxes were delivered today on the school buses. Um, but we couldn't go into the schools, so we had a truck and a car loaded with stuff. We brought it to the school, and the um, school principal, Alana Sear at Proctor School, who's been just wonderful, and um, Mary Ellen Duggan uh, from the superintendent's office helped us unload it because we couldn't even go into the school. I had to put it on yeah, you know, bring it into the school. It was, it was, it's so wonderful to still be able to do that. And and we just, I mean, we're thankful to, to the community for, for their response and their continued response. So those are the things we have to talk about at these Zoom meetings. So we have lots to, to get involved with. And, you know, the question came up, um, I think at a, a recent Board of Selectmen meeting, uh, What's going to happen during the summer? Will the Nutrition 68 program continue, Pat, uh, through the summer? Well, this uh, the the fact that school is go not going to continue this year. So what we're doing now, where we're putting together boxes like every three weeks, we fill a box or the school fills the, the principal and one of her associates fills a box with approximately three weeks worth of items and that's delivered by a school bus mm -hmm. the school bus that delivers sandwiches to kids and, and families in need every three days i think that's being done being made at the high school which is great that that program is going on and so that same school bus is delivering these boxes to these 30 families. And so three weeks from now, we will. So our hope is uh, if we can manage to do this financially, as far as the funds are concerned, we will. We'll, the plan is we hope to continue this through the, through the summer, Great. like every three weeks or so. Right. Last year, we did a big box at the end of school. Well, it was after school had, had closed. Uh, we had hoped to do a second one, but it turned out that they really, we'd, we'd pretty well packed that box. It's the kind, again, as I said, the kind of stuff that it's tuna fish, it's uh, mac and cheese, it's ramen noodles, it's soup. peanut butter, soup, jelly, mayonnaise. This time we gave them a loaf of bread. And there's something that a kid could just, you know, make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Um, nice. So, and crackers and, you know, uh, granola bars, granola bars snack, fruit. snack fruits, um, jellos, puddings, those things. So sometimes if you fill the box really big, you could probably get away with a month. So yep. let's say we do it in three weeks and then another three weeks when school ends and then probably two boxes through the summer, depending on when school starts again, because that's right. that's another, yeah. you know, if we don't yeah. know when. So, yeah, if the plan is if we have the finances, because we ran through, we had a, a Rotary grant. Well, we received $3,000 from Rotary International from the Rotary Foundation, and we matched that 
and so we had that for this year. Um, we'll probably, we may be able to get a grant one more time. We don't know. We have to work on that. That yes. would be our third year. You can only do that three years. And then we'll see what we do with Nutrition 68. Okay. The, uh, practically every day in the mail, uh, we've had our, our rotary post office box changed to be delivered to here at the house <laughs> so that we don't have to go to the post office box uh, right. every day or every other day. But we've been, we've been getting contributions in the mail uh, two and three checks, four checks maybe a, a day. And uh, it's just amazing. Uh, we've, we've gotten a check for as much as $500 from one family. It, it, it's, it's because they understand that it goes directly. I mean, yeah. there's, no, there's no expenses involved in this. Yeah, it's right. there, we buy the food. Our, our big problem now, I think, is, pro is getting the food you know, finding a, a source, although we've heard that the grocery stores are starting to be stocked again. So um, right. and we're not looking for the kind of stuff they're running out of. Right. So that's that's kind of where Nutrition 68 is. Right. We should probably mention, you know, Chris, can I ask, can I ask? yeah, I, I was just going to say, sorry, sorry, but we should probably mention um, how, how do people find out about the Rotary? What's the, the website? And, and if, if they want to go online and learn more, how can they do that? And also, where, where should they uh, send the check if they well, want to? Our, web, our website got hijacked. Uh oh So do not go to our signs. We thought we were so smart. As you all know, I'm sure as you drive into most towns in New England, you see a sign that says Rotary Meets at, and underneath it, there's a little thing that says the, the time and the location. So we were kind of, it's difficult in Northboro. It has been difficult to find a location. Uh, we now, of course, are at the Senior Center, which is wonderful. It's a beautiful meeting place. But anyway, we kept moving. So we put a sign at the bottom that said, follow us at www.nosperorotary.org. And someone hijacked it. And so oh. now when you go there, you've got this whole Chinese, um, I, mean, right. I think it's Chinese, could be Korean. I'm not sure because I don't read it. But anyway, so that's a problem. Okay. Um, you can go to our Facebook page. We do have a Facebook page, and okay. we're now putting up some YouTube videos on the Rotary. Uh, Rotary Club of Northboro has a YouTube video page, and we've got some videos there of some of the things we're doing. Okay. So this is one way, and you know, um, just send us an email, and we'll invite you to a Zoom meeting, and you can find out. But there is also um, a PayPal, and that's listed, I believe, um, in the Moms Group. Um, there are a few. Um, a community advocate had it in theirs. They had the uh, address. So it's a PayPal account that they can also, but they can just send it to uh, Rotary Club of Northboro, Box. Uh, PO Box 651, uh, Northboro, Mass. Terrific. So Chris, can I ask a couple of questions? Please. Please. So, so, so one, one related to the program and the folks that you're you're delivering food to, if, if someone is on this, um, is seeing this show, and, and, it, and it is pretty food insecure at this point, you know, and, or there's a child that is really food insecure, is there, is there a way that you would add to that list of people to whom you are delivering? And then I guess my, the second question is, I was very attracted by the margaritas and the fact that the, you do these meetings at the senior center. Now, I had been a member of Rotary ages and ages ago, um, and then I confess had, you know, had, had, had stopped, but it occurred to me that, that there are a lot of folks who are, or former business people who could be really interested in this, but they might not have been Rotarians when they were younger. So the question is, can you join Rotary kind of as a, as a senior, as opposed to joining Rotary as a, you know, as a, as a, uh, as a younger business person, right? So both questions. Can you get on the list and, 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 and how do I get the margaritas? Okay, so, so first of all, um, to get on, we have no idea who the families are. The families are chosen uh, by the school nurses, the, the school principals and health and human services. So we, that's, we don't even know who they are. Um, they, they, um, they, they vet them, they talk to them. There's certain criteria that they have put together, the, the school system has put together. And we don't even know, some, some weeks we might have four from Lincoln Street and five from, from Mellican and three from Proctor and two from Peasley and the next week. But all we know is 
they, we know a number and we, that's how we used to do it, put the bags together and then someone would come and pick them up and deliver them to the schools. So we, yeah, it, we're, and it's, it's so much better that way, um, the anonymity of it. We don't know who they are. Okay. Um, so now, yeah. I now I understand. Now I understand. Now I understand. So now get to the margaritas part. Get, <laughs> do you do you take do you still take new members and 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 where did, how would they and and is there some criterion and how do they how would they sign up? Well, we would actually be delighted to have uh, quote unquote seniors uh, <laughs> because seniors tend to have more time to devote to the projects that we're doing. Uh, even though, you know, at our regular meetings, people who are working uh, put aside the time at lunchtime to come to our meetings. But uh, absolutely, it would be a case where they could, you know, contact us, uh, Pat and Skip, at, uh, at our home number or Phone number, phone number home, of, which they're, they're out there everywhere on our numbers, but we can, you know, give them again. But, um, you know, to your question about the seniors being involved, that's kind of an interesting thing because we've had people say to us, oh, because you meet at the senior center, that means um, that everybody that belongs to Rotary must be a senior. And okay. how many of us realize that, you know, you don't have to be a senior, number one, to get involved at the senior center. There are all kinds of things that go on at the senior center that you don't have to be a senior to be a part of. But also, you know, that's kind of a mindset as well. You're, 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 what is it? You're as young as you feel or as young as you act, and we're yes. certainly nowhere near. We don't act like our age, that's for sure. Um, but there, there are so many ways that seniors, in quotes, can get involved. Well, and Chris is not a senior, um, but Chris joined us. Um, he came Absolutely. as a, just as, as a speaker. That's one way you've got something. One of the things that's great about Rotary is that um, if you've got something you're passionate about, Rotary is a great organization to belong to because you can express that passion. Mm -hmm. Contact us and say, I'd love to come to Rotary and speak about. Mm -hmm. And you come and speak and you meet us and, and we're all, we're pretty friendly people. Um, and so all of a sudden you're, you're a part of us and then your project, I, I guess we could use many examples. Um, the example of the fact that we have a, um, a ban on plastic bags in Northborough. Um, the, the young lady who spoke at town meeting and got that passed is the president of our Interact Club, and that's our high school Rotary Club. And she had the aid of, um, of uh, um, Jean Cahill in town, and Jean became a member of the club. Um, and so, you know, just through that kind of, of action, um, Leslie Harrison, who's done a lot of work for us and with us, has a great involvement and interest in Haiti. And yeah. also in our other program that we're doing now that you mentioned, Arthur, about COVID-19. So, you know, if people come in with new ideas. Chris comes in, he tells us all about the library. The next thing you know, we're having a program there uh, right. with Paul Farmer and Bending the Act movie, uh, Bending the Ark movie. Uh, right. And that's that's another new member. So it, you come in with a passion and an idea and you have a chance to make it grow. So, Absolutely. yeah, you mentioned Paul Farmer. I mean, that is a an amazing opportunity. So Paul Farmer, Arthur, you're probably aware he's kind of, um, you know, the, the leader of the Partners in Health group. They're out of Boston. They've been, you know, providing health support for Haiti for years and years. And um, we're having him come and speak. I mean, of course, obviously, it's kind of in limbo at the moment, but we're planning to have him come to Algonquin High School in the fall and Leslie Harrison as Pat mentioned has been working on this and you know he's going to be there um, we're hoping to have him sign some of his books he's got a new book coming out I mean so it's a it's a great opportunity and, and we're just hoping that we're going to be able to actually bring that off sometime in the fall um, and, and the whole community will be you know able to come out hopefully we'll see how things go and and hear Paul the Dr. Paul Farmer speak about his work in Haiti so that's just another example of how the Rotary is involved. Absolutely. Yeah. The and, and I think and I guess for, from my perspective, it's just such an exciting. It 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 makes me think about Rotary in a, in a just in a different way. You know, I I know I know that I, I remember going to a Rotary meeting. Oh, maybe 
oh, maybe 10 years ago, you know, and I know one of the, or a couple of the members here in Marlboro were kind of, I want to say bemoaning the fact that the average age at Rotary had gotten much older, you know, had got, and I know that there is a, one of the, one of the Rotary initiatives has been initiative around Alzheimer's, you know, and dealing with dementia related issues. But, it, but, it, but from listening to Pat and Skip, I mean, they're great, they're great, you know, messengers for this, right? It, it, it's kind of, it, it implies a vision of a different Rotary, of a, of a, of a Rotary that very much combines the, the, that their great tradition of, you know, business people who are involved in community service, right? With this demographic reality of this gigantic number of people now who, you know, are, are, is still in, are engaged, you know, they're, they're older, they're still engaged in their businesses because, you know, the, in the old, you know, when we were growing up, you know, 60, 65, you, you stopped, you know, nobody stops now, right? <laughs> So the notion of having a, a group that really has both of these, you know, has this kind of vibrance of ongoing business, while at the same time tapping into both the time and the resources of this very large senior community, and what better place than this amazing senior center that you've got, you happen to have in Northboro, mm -hmm. this just gem of a of a, a senior center that has the industrial kitchen. You know, we've got it's just a great place. To in, for what for that to happen, I, I just it's just wonderful. This it really kind of opened my eyes to that possibility. I never thought of it before. Yeah. Well, and then and then on to, uh, the fourth Tuesday, you can have margaritas. So not <laughs> not and, the senior center. You understand that you there's no alcohol at the senior. That's center. right. That's right. And Arthur, I have great hope for the Rotary because Pat mentioned the Interact Club, mm. and you should see these kids. They're, I mean, we call them kids, but they are an amazing group of young adults high school kids who meet regularly and it's it's called the Interact Club and it's kind of like a feeder group in a sense. Uh, and, and I'm assuming they're going to go on and become leaders in, in the Rotary. And uh, I think one of them last year got the Paul Harris Award. Yes. Which yes. is an incredible award and an honor for a high school student. Maybe you could just talk about the Interact Club for a minute. Well, the Interact Club they're going to have, they're actually going to be putting a, a YouTube video together, which you will find interesting. I don't know, what, what did they interview you, Chris? I'm not sure. Not yet. Oh, <laughs> they're, Maybe they'll interview Arthur. <laughs> they're interviewing people in town. They're doing um, small clips, uh, video clips, uh, 30 seconds to a minute, um, the school principal, et cetera, on how they're coping with the COVID virus. And they're putting that all together as a video. The kid's doing it all on their own. And it will be a YouTube video on our YouTube um, site that, you know, people can can take a look at. But they're, uh, they, um, they just, they come up with amazing ideas. We're going to do a... a, a nutrition program feed the hungry what is it i can't um uh the, the big food packing program we're going to be doing it with uh with the san goban community uh, that was all set to go it was going to happen um probably next month and of course we've had to cancel all of that but they again put this all together themselves they come up with these wonderful ideas they have meetings Sometimes they meet twice a, a week. Sometimes they'll meet at the library one, and then they'll meet at the high school another day. Um, they've got about 50 members. Um, it's North Bro, South Bro. It's a community group. And they somehow manage to be innovative and, and they know how to, they put out letters and things that are so descriptive people respond to them they're they're just a great group of kids um and one of our one the young lady that founded it got it started four years ago now who's a sophomore in college this year we did give her a paul harris last year um because of the amazing work that she had done she certainly exemplified rotary so so, so i want to I, I know that we're getting close to the end chris but i just wanted to make a couple of comments before we yeah. just let these these great guys go first you know, you may want to talk to those the kids at the Interact Club and have them talk with with cable to see if they can also take that piece and and have it converted to uh, to a, a a video on cable for Great folks idea. who once again because that's the advantage of cable is you've got people who may not be checking their their YouTube stuff all the time but they're certainly checking their TV. But the other thing I just I just want to mention uh, is in terms of the mar going back to the margaritas again that 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 the. <laughs> My friend, just in, in my friend Trish Pope, who runs the senior center in uh, Marlboro, has now uh, started getting um, um, 
one day beer and wine licenses really? for the senior center. That's right. To do, you know, individual events, you know, so, you know, there's there's hope. There is there's hope. You can continue to make the, the senior center the an amazingly dynamic place. So, Chris, yet again, you could yet you again. score a bit. You keep finding these people. They're just great. <laughs> So, well, so I, I really want to, th you know, th thank you, Chris, for doing this. This is really well, wonderful. Thank you, know. you, Arthur. We're going to continue to do this. I'm happy to co-host. Thank you for inviting me to be your co-host. And, and as long as, you know, things are kind of in this limbo period, I'm happy to continue to, to be available each week. Um, perhaps we'll have Pat and Skip on again, but um, we really want to thank you guys. And um, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll plan to see you at Margarita's at least virtually uh, <laughs> next time. <laughs> Please. Thank you. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, Thank thanks to the folks at Cable at New England at at, uh, at Northbrook Cable. It's really great, Dana Volk, uh and and Kathy Dalgleish. And we'll see you again on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Northbrook, the COVID nineteen version. Thanks very much. Thank you.